everybody. So uh, this is going to be part two of the, uh, the molding and casting videos. So I did, um, you know, if you, if you want to watch part one, um, it was I don't know, like a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. Um, and then uh, I was talking about doing my new uh, mold making technique using Legos. <laughs> um, and uh, I've done some, some stuff, you know, like I've been casting up stuff like crazy. Like just uh, whenever I'm doing laundry or whatever, I'll, I'll cast up some stuff and let it cure on top of the wash the dryer and uh, um, shake the air bubbles out. But yeah, so I'm going to talk about my casting techniques, some, some tips and tricks that I, some things that I like to do when I do casting. And then I have a, a new paint job for the, um, the new molds, uh, the new uh, dungeon tile kind of pieces. Um, so, you know, like the, 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 when I originally started working on this stuff, I was super into frost grape, right? And, um, I, uh, I wanted to make all kinds of stuff for, for frost grape. So I put snow on everything. And then now, like, there's a lot of other games that we play where, you know, I decided like, Oh, like I want to use this stuff, but it's supposed to be in a jungle, so it can't have snow on it, you know, or it's supposed to be in hell, so it should be, it shouldn't be so cold around here. But, um, like you get the idea, right? So, I wanted to do a more utilitarian kind of paint job where it would just look like stone, um, not necessarily like it could be in a dungeon, it could be like in any setting and kind of fit in into a, a fantasy setting, right. So I'm, I'm doing a new paint job and then, uh, and then I'll show you some of the things that I like to do to um, do uh, casting, some tips and tricks that I have for casting. And then a, a quick painless paint job for if you're going to do a lot of terrain, you don't want to make it complicated, <laughs> but it looks really good. So anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it and I will show you all of that. Okay. So molding and casting part two. <laughs> um, one of the things that I really like about casting is that, um, if you say, if you were going to 3d print like a big piece of terrain, um, you know, it can take like three plus hours to print something big and then sometimes stuff fails <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, like, uh, I think that people tend to think that 3d printing is, is free. It's like you buy the printer and then, and then everything else is just free. Um, but you know, like the, the resin costs money, like the, you know, the PLA or whatever kind of materials you're using cost money. But with these, you know, it's just like you pour it in the mold and then you forget about it and then you stick it together later like Legos, which is the, the tedious part, you know. But um, so everything is based on an inch system. You know, these are one inch wide, half an inch tall. Um, these guys are one inch square, about a quarter inch less, maybe a little less than that tall. Um, but if I cast two of these and then the one of these, then I will have enough to, to make a, a wall section. So, all right, so this is the way that I like to do this. Um, I have, this is um, a hydrocal, and hydro hydrocal is just a really, really tough plaster. It's, uh, there's, there's um, a version that's like hydrostone, you know, or like uh, hydrocal is like one step down in toughness from hydrostone or whatever it is. It's like, it's just a really, really tough casting plaster, right? And then, so that's, that's going to be one of the ingredients. But um, uh, another thing that I like to do just as an added little extra step is just to add some graphite. And then graphite is just, it's a really, really cheap, 
uh, pigment, you know, and it's non-reactive. So I know that it's not going to mess with the chemical reaction that's going on with the plaster. And it's just going to add a little bit of color to the stone um, so that it's not glaring bright white. And then if something happens, you know, if I drop something and then it gets chipped or whatever, it just, it's not, it's not such a glaring uh, thing. And then this is another thing that I started using that I, re I, I really like this stuff. Um, this is a, um, a concrete additive. And uh, so it just, it, the, what this does is it just makes, um, it just makes the cast stronger. Um, so it's like the combination of this plus the hydrocal, and like the if you're if you're using resin, um, first off, resin is going to be tougher on your molds um, because resin heats up, and then it's a little bit more caustic. Um, it's gonna you're gonna get less life out of your molds. It's just it's gonna break your molds faster. So there's there's a lot of reasons why I like this, doing it this way, right? And then this is another thing. This is, um, these are just silicone um, mixing cups. So then when they, when they get like plaster and stuff uh, uh, caked onto them, then I can just kind of squeeze it and then it comes right off. So yeah, just a few little things that make it, make it a little easier. Um, so I like to add the wet ingredients first. Um, I will put in a little bit of this stuff. And then this uh, Sika, this stuff, you can get it at Home Depot. I've, 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 I pick mine up at Home Depot. So I'm just going to add a little bit. Um, and then a little bit actually goes a long way, so that might actually be. Uh, so I've, I filled that up to whatever that is, 20 milliliters. And then uh, I'm going to add some plaster um, and then there's no there's no real like science to this I mean there is but it's I just do it by eye um, so you're looking for more of like a consistency so you want it liquid enough so that when you pour it in it's gonna go into all the cracks and stuff and you're not gonna get the air bubbles and all that um, but you want it solid enough so that it uh, um, doesn't, um, uh, I don't know, you know, like I've never, I, I've never really tried like super, super soupy stuff before, but, but I'm, there's a consistency that I'm going for. So, uh, so basically I want to add my dry ingredients to my wet ingredients and then stir them up and make sure that everything is totally combined. And then also, this is going to look darker when it dries because um, when this stuff evaporates out, it's kind of like um, like Elmer's glue, how it looks white when it's when it's uh, wet, and then when it dries, it's like dries kind of clear. So, um, anyways, like I you know I've done enough of these where I just I just kind of know like what it looks like, what, what I want it to look like, and just eyeball it. Um, so the consistency that I'm going for though, right, is what I call melted milkshake. <laughs> um, it's just like if you, if you go to McDonald's, you know, and then you get like, a, like don't go to McDonald's, McDonald's is gross. But like the, you know, if you get a milkshake and then you let it melt in the sun <laughs> and it's like about that thick. That's about the thickness that I'm going for, right? Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go for uh, this guy first, right? And then if I, if I pour it into a corner and like you can see that I didn't get all of the little pieces of foam board out of there it's like there's still some some foam board in there. But um, if you pour it into a corner and then sort of let it do its thing, 
um, you're going to get better cast that way too. You're not going to get as many air bubbles that way as well. So, you know, just like adding a little bit of pigments and then um, just taking a few, like a few little extra kind of steps like this is going to save you some headache later. So that is going to just self-level on its own, but I can kind of help it, you know, like get into the corners and stuff, like anywhere, anywhere where you think that air bubbles might get trapped, you can just kind of like work it into the corners um, and then kind of like, you know, push it around and, uh, and, and get it in there and even like level it off, you know, and stuff like that. And um, that will save you a little bit of headache later on. So I'm going to see how many molds I can get out of this. And like the, the kind of like the smoother the back, the better, because, um, the, uh, when you're gluing, when you're gluing your pieces together, um, the more level the back is like the flatter it is, the better because they're just going to have better uh, contact to stick together. All right. So I'm going to keep going casting this stuff and then we'll come back to it when it's dry. All right. So these have been sitting for not that long, you know, just like maybe a couple of hours. Um, you can tell when if you can run your fingernail across the back of these things and it doesn't like leave a gouge in it, like the, the long skinny kind of pieces like this, I'm going to be a little bit more careful with and like leave it in there a little bit longer so it can fully cure. Um, but like stuff like this, that's pretty shallow. Um, you can just pop these out like, uh, <clears throat> if you did want to do something to them, like, uh, they're still, you know, at this point, it's still kind of a little bit, uh, soft. So I can, like, break off some of these little hard edges and stuff on here. Um, these are looking really good, though. Like, that's definitely the, the right look that I was going for, for these. Um... And again, I'm not being too precious with these uh, because it is going to be like kind of like a ruined uh, like flagstone thing. But yeah, everything's looking looking really good uh, as far as the uh, the sculpts and the the, the casts. Um, so you know, like over time, your your molds will start to break down, and like you'll lose some of this fidelity. Like, especially, like, tight little things like this. Like, that kind of stuff will, um, deteriorate in the mold. Um, and then there's even, like, there's still a little bit of foam board in here, like, in these molded pieces. But that will melt when I hit it with spray paint. Um, so... Yeah, but this is, a, this is, these are good. To have, like, little tiny, little shallow molds like this... Um, they're good for when you have other things like this that are bigger pieces and then anything that's left over you can just cast some little flag stones. But um, yeah, I'm going to let everything like fully cure before I um, before I start gluing anything up. Um, but uh, yeah, everything's looking good. So uh, this is where the molds usually live in the, uh, in the laundry room. So what I have here is a, this is a, a sil silplat, just a, a silicone um, mat that you can like uh, shake it and then the plaster will come off of it and stuff like that. Um, there is a little bit of a technique to like pouring this stuff. Like you can, when you, when you pour it, you can kind of like level it off with like a popsicle stick, you know, or something like that to, uh, to make sure that, um, 
the uh, the back the back side is like totally flat, and uh, and then I just I just let it like run off uh, on the sides down here, and yeah, I have uh, my like concrete mix stuff. I have uh, pigments. I'm gonna try. This is uh, concrete pigments. So I'm gonna try this when I run out of the graphite, and then this is like same thing from uh, uh, Home Depot, and then all my my molds and stuff live up over the, the dryer. But when the dryer is drying and then it agitates, it kind of like shakes the the little molds, and then the um, the air bubbles will uh, come up to the top. So it'll help just to get those. Um, the uh, the big the big bubbles out the little ones I don't really care about because it's just going to add some texture to the uh, to the cast pieces you know and just look more like rough stone okay so I um, I have a ton of these these cast up just like every day um, when I'm doing laundry or whatever I'll I'll uh, cast up some. And uh, the, you know, if you didn't know, these guys, these emery board things are just like your best friend when it comes to truing up uh, angles and stuff. Uh, whether it's like with these or, you know, plastic or whatever, it's just like, does a great job of um, truing up right angles. So anyways, um, this is a thing that I'm working on, kind of prototyping. These are, um, this is just, it's, they're like tiles that um, they just have like half inch uh, tab ends. So if I work on like a wall system or something like that, um, this is, this is one way to do it. Like I, I you know, I have my other designs, um, but I was thinking more along the lines of doing something like uh, her starts. Um, like, uh, if you, if you've seen their stuff, it's like, you're supposed to sort of cast up like buildings, you know, and stuff like that, instead of making like kind of uh, wall sections and stuff. But anyway, so I want to, <laughs> I want to make some new dungeon tile things. Um, I'm just going to like true up the sides of these and I want to try a new paint job. Um, cause I don't want, I don't want to do snow anymore. I want to get rid of the snowy stuff. It's just, it's not, it's not, it's not working for me <laughs> because it's, um, it's not utilitarian enough. There's a lot of games that I play that are supposed to be in like a hot environment, you know, or whatever, uh, or inside of a, a dungeon or something like that. Uh, so I just want stone, right? That's the, that's the look that I'm going to go for. And then if I do want to play a game with snow, then I can just use like a snow battle map or something like that. So I'm going to glue these up. Um, let's see. I think I'm just going to use some super glue fast. This is the thick like gel stuff too. Okay so now um, like I um, I use a little bit of uh, PVA glue on these two um, and then I put some sand in between and I'm already just really liking the look of these. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I am gonna hit them with some spray paint and stuff, um, but that's almost like just on its own. That looks pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna seal this stuff down. I'm gonna use some scenery glue. And then scenery glue is just, it's just basically watered down uh, PVA glue or like Elmer's, you know? Um, and then you put like a little bit of rubbing alcohol in there. It kind of helps to 
helps it to get into the cracks and stuff. Uh, breaks the surface tension. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna just get the sand off the top of these. And then spritz it with a little bit of scenery glue. Maybe it's bright. Just to seal it down. And then it'll sort of flow into there and get in there and uh, help it to run down into the cracks. Like the rubbing alcohol helps it to run down into the cracks and stuff. Uh, and then next I'm going to take it outside and hit it with some spray paint. Okay, so we're outside. I do live near a fire department in case you uh, hear fire trucks going by. Um, this stuff, I use this stuff all the time. This is uh, Rust-Oleum's, their chalky finish. Um, it's a, It just has like this nice slate kind of color. Um, I use it on pretty much everything that it's like terrain related, you know, any kind of scenery thing. Um, so I do live in Colorado, you know, it's like, it's, it's dry and it's pretty sunny. So it's, it's kind of ideal for doing spray paint stuff. You know, if you, if you live in like Minnesota and it's, uh, if it's like, uh, cool and, uh, and damp, then just use the airbrush, you know, do it inside. But um, but I like this stuff because it's ready to go. You know, it's in the can, and uh, and then it just it just looks good on pretty much everything terrain related. So I take um, take everything, I put it in a box, you know, cardboard box outside, and then I hold the can back about about ten inches roughly when I'm spraying, and then kind of do pulses. And uh, that seems to get like the best uh, coverage on things. Okay, so yeah, super happy with these. Um, the the only thing is, is that uh, looking at my design and then this bowed a little bit. It's it's kind of like. Uh, it's a very slight bevel, but you can kind of see it, and I, and I think it's like pinching in on these, so it kind of curved like the, uh, I don't know if that's the glue, or just because it, um, you know, that's how it, it contracted when it dried or whatever, um, but it, it got a, a little bit of a curve in it, and um, so anyways, what I want to do is um, there's this look that I'm going for, right? Um, I think I want to do like a slate kind of look, but with some, uh, I don't know, just gonna play with it. But uh, so what I like to do for like dirt and stuff like that on this kind of stuff is I like to use um, pigments. And um, the pigments, you know, it's just, it's they're just pigments. <laughs> um, but I'll use like a, a makeup brush. And these are super cheap. Like this is one that I've used for, I use them for like dry brushing and stuff like that. And then they get crapped out and, but they work well for stuff like this. They're, they're like $2, you know, or something at like Target, you know, the Walmart, places like that. So I'm just going to try, I'm just going to put some pigments on here. And then I'm working from dark to light. Um, putting on my darkest colors first. And then working up to the lighter ones. And um, so these, the, the pigments they they uh, dull down a lot when you fix them to whatever you're working on. So it's gonna look kind of stark at first. Like they're um, once I put some something to seal these down, it's gonna dull down that 
the the colors of the pigments a lot and they kind of settle into the cracks and stuff. So I'm trying to kind of push that into the into the little cracks where like the dirt is, right? And then next, or, or I'm gonna put in some lighter colors too. A bit of reds, some let's see, like some some uh, raw sienna kind of colors. Um, so first, so yeah, I'm gonna put this down first, and then I'm gonna dry brush over it to get the um, get this this top the uh, the stones to kind of pop out a little better. So I want these to kind of settle into the cracks and stuff. Um, I just like this look. I like how this stuff looks for like terrain, and it takes literally just the seconds. I mean, you just watch me do it, right? really quick and painless so yeah and then you can get these at like art supply places um, or you know if you have like um, pastels lying around you can grind up the pastels that you have and turn them into pigments and use them like that it's just easier to use these because they've already done that you know they're already just ground up pigments that are ready to be mixed into paint or whatever, what have you, like this, right? So now what I want to try is I want to try a new paint that I got. Um, it's like a, a chalk paint. I'm going to grab that. Okay, so I found this. This is... Um, it's uh, on the stuff at like Michael's, I think. And um, it's actually, it has like a very chalky kind of finish to it. I need to mix that up a little better. Um, it has kind of like a, I don't know, like a, like a sage kind of light gray color. Um, but that's going to get mixed in with these pigments too. And, uh, and I just want to do like kind of an overbrush, a dry brush overbrush of like this top, top layer of, uh, yeah. So, th I mean, this stuff is dirt cheap. Like the full cart stuff is uh, a big thing of it. It's going to cost you like a, a few bucks, like $3, $2, something like, or I mean, you know, like maybe five. Um, so I just want to try this. And I mean, if I don't like it, I'm just going to spray paint it again and, uh, and go over it again. So again, just using the makeup brush, right? And I'm going to do a, a dry brush over brush of this. Just have a, a piece of India for like a, you know, a paper towel would do the trick. Um, just to take some of that off the, the top, right? And I'm just going to kind of come in and do an overbrush over the top of the, um, the, the most raised stones. Let's see how that looks. It's a little red. I don't know how I feel about that. I like it, but... I think I might actually try sealing down the pigments first or doing um, uh, less of this red color. Could just come in and do like a second dry brush. Or overbrush, I guess this is an overbrush, it's not a dry brush. It's a rough overbrush. All right, so after trying out a few different, uh, or, you know, going kind of hard into the paint on these, um, 
I decided that I think I like the I like the combination of mostly just this raw sienna pigment and then a heavy, heavy overbrush of this um, chalk, chalky sandstorm color. Oh my god, that was close. That was really close. Just missed it. Um, so anyways, now I need to, I'm going to take this stuff outside and then, um, like you can see how, how this, uh, the, the pigments, you know, they're, they're pretty stark in some places, right? But once they're sealed down, once I hit them with some, uh, some varnish, some dull coat, it's going to dull them down a lot like a ton. Um, so I'll show you, I'll, I'll do some, some turnaround or like some, some good detail pictures of these things and just to show what the, the final paint job looks like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that's going to be it. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.